The following program is rated TV MALSV. It contains strong language, sexual situations, and violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. We are live with Will the Brown Bomber Santiago. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> What's up, man? What up, what, big dog? What's going on, my people? Hey, how was it? See you again. How was your recent event, man? It seems like uh, it was a busy, big, loud, crazy, sold-out event. How was uh, how was all the atmosphere that led up to that? Oh man, it was. Uh, it's always. It's always. Um, it feels like surreal. It was uh, when you got, you know, when you when, when you're coming out, just when you're part of something that someone's cheering for you and someone's really actually, you know, wanting you. That shit is like it, that's that's uh, an experience I really can't. It, it's hard to explain, but it was it was it was both. It was it was a shit. Yeah, man, it was a huge event, dude. Um, you, you know, you had your hometown heroes, um, uh, gracing all of the cards. Uh, like the whole card was littered with like, Albuquerque people, no, man. It was, so it was Kirky for sure. Dude. Yeah. So, I mean, the fans were probably fucking loving it. Oh uh, man. I'm a huge fan guy. I love, uh, seeing the interactions of crowds and stadiums and how they're, how they're designed, how loud they get. I'm a huge fan of that shit. So do you think that was louder than, uh, Knucklemania three or no? Um, I would say, I know, I, I would say, I would say, yeah. Uh, I mean, I would say, uh, it's, no, it's man, close. It was madness, dude. <laughs> nah, it was close. I mean, my my uh my perform my my walkout song was fucking that that shit caught a lot of tension and it caught a lot of cheers and whatnot. <laughs> and people are still talking about that. So I would say I would say not too far behind, but close. That's what's okay. up. That's what's up. So uh we we have a tradition on the show where uh first timers that come on the show we let them kind of explain who they are what they are about in their own words so we don't want to put words in your mouth about who you are right and how you got to where you are today sir yes sir so who the fuck is brown bomber mr will santiago i'm just a kid from lawrence nah <laughs> 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 nah man i'm just i'm just a i'm um i'm a humble person uh very outgoing very um um uh, personality wise, I get along with everybody. I'm cool with everybody. Um, I like to always, uh, go the extra mile. Uh, if, if I consider you one of my, what, you know, one of my peoples, I'll go out my way for you. Um, just a real humble and, and, uh, a very humble person that likes to, um, help out and anything that I can, uh, uh, what you call it, that I can do or, or be a assist of. 
I'm just a good guy all around. Um, I'm a, one, of the, one of the leaders at my gym, and um, I take that serious. Oh, uh, yeah. um, let's not skip too fast. Like, um, so w I guess I'm going to clarify a little closer. Like, how did Will grow up? You know, did you grow up in Albuquerque? You know, what was your, what was your childhood like? You know, like, who is Will as a person as a, to make who you are today? And how'd you go from MMA to bare knuckle? Let's yes, sir. Um, I, um, I'm originally from, uh, from Boston. I took, uh, well, from Massachusetts. Um, I born and, and raised David out there. That. Shout out, shout out David Potter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Boston represent, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> originally from Mass. I was born and raised out there. My, uh, my childhood didn't, you know, it, it, we got a rough start. Um, uh, been to a lot of group homes, was into prison in and out for a while. And then, um, I figured I had to change my life and do something different. And then uh, the change began. Um, fighting has always been uh, a dream of mine since I was a kid because it runs in my family. My mom would tell me stories about one of my uncles that became, that was a uh, first cruiserweight champion for Puerto Rico in 1975, which is Horacio Ocasio. And she would tell me stories about him when I was a kid. And since I was a kid, that's what I wanted to do. And then um, again, I, I, I had a little rough start, got caught up in the streets or whatnot. Um, once I got all that out the way, um, my childhood dream came, my, my childhood dream came and, um, and I've been living it ever since I did. MMA, I was doing MMA for a while. Um, and then now, uh, what got me into bare knuckle was, um, a good friend of mine. Actually, he's, uh, the, actually the pound for pound champ, which is Luis Palomino. Uh, me yeah, and him yeah, became, the Palomino, man. yeah, uh, me and him, uh, became really, really good friends when, um, he came out here. I think it was a, a, a few years ago to train and he was out here for about a year. And we got really, really super close. Um, Is that a Jackson at, Wink? Um, yes, 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 Jackson Wink. Yeah, he came out here for about a year. And uh, we became super close. And it was a point where um, I guess he was um, he was getting to retire. He was getting ready to retire from MMA. And there was nothing that I can do to uh, to, to to convince him to stay a little bit longer. Because I honestly do believe that uh, Lou is a badass. Um, so, you know, that, that, that story went on. And then, um, uh, a, a few years after that, I found myself in a situation where I didn't want to do MMA no more. I was going through a hard time and just through his hard work of, you know, of preparation, uh, um, um, dedicated himself to something and just going a lot with it actually motivated me and took me out of a dark hole that I was in at the time. Cause I'm not sure I've said this numerous times in, 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 in certain interviews, but my mother had passed away around the time and, Condolences, and I was brother. I was uh, going through a real, you know, real, real rough time and just, and just, you know, opening up Instagram and watching Lou doing his thing, you know, uh, 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 you know, just fighting, you know, fighting and fighting and every day with discipline and training and all that shit. It kind of took me out of a... He's a, he's uh, a different breed, Paul Amino. Yeah, right? man. Yes, he is, bro. I, I got, you know, I owe, I owe a lot to that brother. And um, that's how I got into Bare Knuckle. And then I got my management team behind me and then we've been, we, we, we've been going ever since. Do you know what I love about Palomino? Palomino is not just a, a smart man in the ring. He is smart. He's intelligent outside of the ring. That guy is full of knowledge, man, especially business savvy knowledge. He's a fighter that understands that the fighter is the fucking market. He knows that he's a billboard. He knows that he needs to move a certain way. He needs to act a certain way, and he knows how to draw attention. Palomino's exactly, good, good exactly. guy, man. He's, um, he's a great person to look up to. No, man, that's, 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 I call him my big brother, man, because he is, he calls me, I'm the big brother, but I, he's older than me, so he's the big bro. <laughs> Super <laughs> but, humble um, guy, nah, too, man. man. Um, having, uh, having Louis, you know, in, in, um, in my corner, man, it's, it's surreal, man. It's, it's, it's one of the greatest things and one of the greatest feelings to have when you have someone as down as earth to him and as humble at the same time, man, but he, if he fucks with you, he fucks with you, and, um, and it's been like that ever since, and just having someone that I can either call or, or look up to um in times of you know me needing some either motivation or whatever man it's just been a blessing having him there <laughs> absolutely yeah. man uh he stopped by jackson wink right after we did when we were down yeah there. we pretty cool oh no we do we see him no his his no, team we, showed up before I, yeah we they, left they yeah. said he was on the way i think he must have called down there and let him know he was coming by yeah we've had so palomino we on up. the show um i think twice haven't we one time two times two times uh, once. Follow up. Yeah, we have a follow. We have a follow up with Palomino. He's supposed to come on. Uh, we want to get him back on the Fight World, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on this, on this platform here, because we moved over to Fight World Live with uh, David Potter and his crew. We joined. I don't know if you watched the merge, but it, it it's uh, was a big transition for all of us, and we're looking forward to making this thing happen on Amazon Prime. And uh, look, we're looking to go to Roku TV and Apple TV in the next following weeks. Hell yeah. 
Heck yeah, yeah man. man. Any, anything, anything I could do or what we can do to, to help you guys get there, man. You know, you always can count on us to get to help to help out or, you know, whatever. We got to repost or anything, anything that has to do with with getting you guys to hey the man next shout level, out man. to jackson wing too they really fuck with us they always share our shit man so i just wanted to you know you you're working closely uh with jackson wink like always and uh i just want to say shout out to your guys' gym man they fuck with us we fuck with them thank you thank you man we're good guys over here man we just not but love man humbleness man hell yeah man oh, that Hulk private Hulk. tour was the shit man it got a ton of views too man that shit still gets played today Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir, man. I like to say, uh, you know, Jackson Wink uh, is one of a kind. I mean, you have um, uh, you you have a lot of people that um, you know, they go to gyms and they do the cross training thing and all that type of stuff. And I'm all in favor of that, but I'm I um, I kind of stick. I, I like to stick to myself or stick to our gym as much as possible. And don't get me wrong, I do go out from time to time and do get little cross training here and there. But for the most part, I'm just I'm just I'm just loyal to your core, and I just stay at the gym for the most part. Hey, man, you're on the wall there. I understand. Yeah, you're on the wall of fame, bro, and you ain't got a little spot. You got a big banner in the back. You know, it's right yeah, it's, by the cage. As you as you walk in, you're on the floor. You know what I mean? It's still... Yeah, yeah man. Nah, man. It's 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 been a blessing. Like I said, it's it's been a blessing since I've been out here. I've been out here now for, I think I'm going on eight years. It's hard to believe, oh, yeah. but it's going on eight years. And um, since I've been here, um, since I've been out here, man, Misha, he, he, I'm not sure if everyone knows who Misha is, but Misha... um. He runs the gym. Um, he's pretty much the uh, the general manager over there, and he yeah, has made the transition for me uh, coming out here, and has made me feel welcome as a family. So I can't, you know, shout out to him. I can't, I can't say anything, any anything better or anything humbling more over that over that brother. Yeah, we just love Greg's office. Uh, Greg Jackson. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're right. I gotta answer this phone call. Sorry, hold, hold on, man. Jason, I'm I'm in the show right uh, now, bro. Anyways, let's go. Let's go over your. Uh, your let's go over your last fight here. Everybody. So round one, you got that. You said you got that, that punch finger in the eye. Yes. Talk about battle. Talk about battling back, not being able to see and going in. Oh, we're gonna draw. talk about the fight. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Okay. Bro, pull, pull up something real quick. Uh, oh, go go ahead, bro. Don't let me interrupt you. Uh, I just want to pull up a slide at the same time as you go on. This. Uh yeah. Yep. All right. With Jeremy Holloway. Yeah. Let's yeah. Yeah. Pull up the stats real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're gonna pull up the numbers and shit on you. Um, that was a tough fight, man. You want you want to yeah. go? Into yeah. No, um, it was, man. I'll be honest with you, man. I've never, and out of all my fights in MMA and even on the street, I've never, I've never experienced something like that. So to to overcome something like that, I'm actually pretty happy on myself that I was able to get it to to a draw. But um, I'll, I'll be honest, that shit freaked me out. I never experienced that or never went or never fought under, under those conditions just to where I couldn't see for about two rounds. And then when I was able to see, it was only a little bit. Um, but I, I, I can't complain. I know uh, Jeremy was uh, was was game on. Um, it was hard for me to measure distance uh, for me to just to get anything off because of yeah, that. Yeah, because I couldn't see like that. But um, I give my hats off to Jeremy, though, man. The guy the guy came in and, and, and fought, even though he gassed out at the end. But. You know he um he came he came he came into the war man he and he was taking some he was taking some pretty big shots as well too so um yeah, hats yeah. Off to him. I I'm biased and I'm not afraid to say so I was going for you off the top you know what I mean I and didn't, I didn't even have a banner ready for him so <laughs> yeah we we made we pre make some of our banners you know um determining who might win so we can post them on the on the on the profiles and shit. And we only had one for you, dog. So we were we were super biased on this one. <laughs> I didn't make a draw. I appreciate it, man. I, I appreciate it. Bro, it's going up, man. But um, our boy, will man. Nah, my I, like I said, my biggest thing was that you know I I, I kind of figured that once we got once he got that knockdown, I kind of figured I had to do something to try to you know rally back and try to either get a W or a draw. I'm not. That was the first draw ever in my career. Um. But I mean, I'll take a draw any day over a loss. Um, You're my I'll first draw that I've gotten the interview, actually. So I get to ask this question. You know, uh, what's it feel like to actually not take a loss or not take a win for all that dedication? It sucks, <laughs> dude. Does, is it worse than a loss? <laughs> it sucks. Well, not that it sucks in that way. It's just you know we trained hard for the fight and we had a we had a good 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 game uh, a great uh, game plan for Mr. Holloway, but it just didn't go out that way. Um, I, bro, I, I, we, we, we put an extra work in camp. Um, I'm not sure if you, if you was able to tell, but I lost, 
I lost a oh, lot yeah. of weight. We was able to get, you know, shredded uh, to better than I've ever been in a long, 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 long time. So, we, you know, the 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 camp was 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 great. We had a great camp. We it, it was I can't complain about the camp. It was just, you know, things happen and what happened. I never experienced that. And it kind of freaked me out a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I'll be honest. You want to go you want to clarify into the eye? Yeah, uh, the eye. Well, the eye now, I mean, it's getting better, but um, I couldn't see, man. Um, I couldn't see for for about almost for about uh, about two rounds. Um, I started was able to see a little bit towards the end of I believe it was the third round. And I was able to do a little bit of what of what you guys saw in the fourth and fifth round. Yeah. Um, but my eye um, um, is getting better. Um, as Did you feel it as out. it happened? Uh, say that again. Did you feel it as it happened? Like, did you know what happened as it happened? Yes. Like the minute, like the minute I got, like the minute I was, I was tagged, I was like, oh shit. You know what I mean? And then from his, his, uh, his corner noticed something was going on with my eyes. So they were screaming it out to him. Yeah. And my coaches were screaming, you know, to go forward, go forward. But I'll be honest. <laughs> I didn't want to get hit because I, I kind of figured shit. that. I, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't see. And then. He was already like you know I kind of felt like he was already squeezed uh, sneaking in little little jabs through that through, through the through my front guard because I was having a hard time seeing so when they were telling me to go forward I was like I pulled the uh, uh, what you call it a, a, a Mike Perry move I don't want to get hit right now that's <laughs> great you know what I'm saying so hey, yeah. that we were just going over your numbers too man even though you couldn't fucking see your striking was fucking still higher than his your percentage wise and shit and, and you kept it real tight actually dude oh, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was looking at the comparisons here and you, uh, your punch summary, dude, you landed 63% of your fucking punches in bare knuckles. Yeah, man. Our, every, like knuckle, I said, bro. we had a good game plan for Mr. Holloway. You know what I'm saying? But that shit, I, I, again, that shit, it freaked me out, bro, to the point where I was like, you know, I was backpedaling a lot so that I can try to buy some time to um uh so that the vision can come back, but it just wasn't coming That's back. That's got to be one it. of the highest accuracies, though. You know, I mean, other than the, the, you know, the one punchers that are a hundred percent, you know what I mean? But like someone that's gone that many rounds and shit, uh, that's a high percentage. 63% on bare knuckle is fucking madness. Right. I mean, <laughs> we, like I, like I said, man, our preparation was strong. It was just that little thing. Um, but I mean, we were still able to, 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 like you said, keep the accuracy up, not what we expected, but we'll take it for what, for what was, uh, occurring. Uh, we're yeah. happy with that. So when you're when you're training, man, uh, what do you like? Like, what is your favorite uh, hand uh, workout? Are you like working pads or do you like working bags? What like what is your what is your favorite go to? My like, biggest thing, honestly, my 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 biggest biggest thing is I do it all. But one of the things that I stress a lot is footwork. I stress footwork a lot, and I also stress um, uh, I also stress I hit mitts. But the way how I do it, it's in um it's it's what we call it. It's called punch count. So that um, we won't get tired throwing punches. They may think that we're going to get tired throwing punches. But if we don't get tired throwing punches, then it's going to be a problem for anybody. Because we're going to always continue to throw those punches. Yeah, and and uh, build those shoulders up so that we can keep throwing those punches. Fair. You, did you have something? Uh, I didn't want to interrupt you. No, I was just thinking about like the north, the, the north south bank. Oh, right, gotcha. Yeah. Um, you know, you've been at Jackson Wink for, did you say eight years? Yeah, about yep. Have you been working closely, or do you work closely with John Jones? John, well, well, John, John, right now for the time being, uh, John is um is not at the gym, but um, but prior to that, and that just happened not long ago. But John is um, what I like to say, John is a very good uh good friend of mine. Um, I've learned so much from John just watching on the sidelines. It's not even funny. Um, what a lot of people don't know about John is that people may think that John is, uh, is, 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 is a talented guy, which he is, yeah. but a lot of people may feel, think that he doesn't put in the work. That brother fucking works, bro. And oh, just, I'm sure, bro. With the, with I, his, bro. I mean, he has two, two older brothers, right? Uh, yes, he does. Older, yes, he right? does. He's, He's a young it. one, but yeah. John, John, John is the real, real dude. Great heart, great hearted person. Um, uh, he prays for me all the time. Every time I'm getting ready to go for a fight or something like that. Um, the, 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 the knowledge of just watching him from the sidelines and his mindset that he, that he has preparing for fights. Uh, that's um, so, you know, in Joe Rogan's opinion, that's the world's deadliest fucking fighter, man. And, uh, you know, that's why I think that's why I wanted to bring him up the most is, 
you know, from and Levi's opinion. So, and that's Levi's favorite fighter. Yeah, that's Levi's top dog. Um, fucking, and with with someone like like yourself, you you do have the greatest privilege in the world. It's like working along next to GSP. You're seeing the the greatest of who they do, what they do. Yes, sir. Um, is there a, sp- a, a specific uh, 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 um, talent of his that you've taken up yourself? Um, well, uh, yes and no. And, and, and the reason why I'll, I'll go and start off with, with no first, because, I mean, a lot of the stuff that he does actually is for MMA. And we can't do most of the stuff in, at Bare Knuckle. Sure. But one of the things that I that I that I that I that I did gain from grabbed from him and i still do it to this day is the mindset is the mindset of of beautiful of, answer dude you know what i'm saying is the mindset of of just going in there no matter how good you are or how good you think you are or how good people say you are you have to go in there and just work and right. that's one of the things that i that i that i got from him i don't give a fuck if i can be you know a thousand and zero you know what i'm saying you still have to put in the work no matter what and that's one of the things and that one of the things amongst a few other things that I felt like I've grabbed from him um, is just the mindset of, of, of being a warrior and the mindset of overcoming um, uh, uh, difficulties like I just did um, and just being uh, at peace with your inner self. Um, that was one of the most things and, and, and most important things that I feel I've grabbed from him. And not only that, man, but he's a cool dude just to begin with. That's badass, uh, man. And, you know, he's still putting in work because he just posted a picture where he said he went. What like six hours with Gordon Ryan? Yeah, I yeah. see that, dude. Jesus Christ! And just like, and well, I was, it's, it's funny oh, you brought Ryan that up. Because, yeah. Um, he just like go Gordon, I think Gordon, hours. he um, he gave a statement or something like that on um, on him working with John and everything that he had expressed about John or about John's ability to adapt and learn is fucking hands on, bro. He like described John to the T, bro. Cause John picks up on things like, you know, like you wouldn't believe in shit. Like, you know, you'd be like, well, you, you, we just did that. You know what I mean? And um, that's, you know, John's a competitor has always been a competitor and will always be a competitor. I think he'll be a hundred years old and still want to compete. That's, that's just the nature of the things that Joe Rogan of- said. With him having two older professional athlete brothers, I mean, could you imagine the competition in that household? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, holy my God. <laughs> yeah, man. Nah, man. And um, and not only that, man, but he, he loves his brothers as well and he looks up to them as well. So um anything that I feel like John can get as an edge or be, you know, ahead of everybody, he's gonna do hands down and he's gonna put in the work to get there. I think Steve is in deep water. Uh one of our viewers and really good friends, Jeff Unger, he says, Don't worry about your eye, cuz. He's like, mine looks like that from no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, that's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> he also made that comment. He was like, uh, is he in the bathroom pooping? No, he's got dogs. <laughs> His dogs are loud. I need to go to somewhere quiet. He went to the man's private room. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much what I did because my dogs, once they hear they hear me talking loud, I think that somebody's either coming in here or somebody's here, so they stop barking. So I had to come to the other room. Yeah, hell yeah, they're just as excited too. They want to join the conversation, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. Too, dude, it's all good. Let them know. It's all good. <laughs> um, that, speaking of Albuquerque, that card was fucking wild, man. You had Cutman who went out on an arm injury. Like I seen it happen, dude. And you know what's fucking? That made me sad, dude. I me like, too. Bro. I mean, nothing. Me too, Bryce, man. Hall, Bryce Hall competed, dude. You know what I mean? He, I mean, he did what he thought was he was gonna do to win the fucking fight, but. The problem is, is with that uh, no being a no contest or like how like how they ruled that, is that his injury came up by TKO. Oh yeah, TK. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. That's what I'm saying. That card was so fucking weird. So many weird calls. That the, the it should have been a disqualification or something because this that injury came off of Bryce Hall tackling G. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? It wasn't an injury that was. No, it was sustained. after. It was after the. It was no, after the no. After he went down, dude, G grabbed his fucking arm and did not throw another punch with that arm for a whole round, dude. Yo, he, it, he was, was, it, right was, it was. It was. It was. It was tough because G was already G was starting to uh to unload on him, and then that's when the you know that's when yeah, that's after when that first came. knockdown, dude, G got up and just started. <laughs> yeah, and then after that, it was when all that shit happened. It's like G oh. turned the fuck up, dude. I want I want them boys to run it back. Now you know what I mean. But yeah, that shit, was huge. That'll be good, but needed. I'm not. I, I I could be wrong about this, but I'm G went up. A couple weight classes, like, right? Yeah, twenty. I yeah, 20 he. Yeah, they, they did a catch weight because Bryce so heavy. 
Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, I was gonna say Bryce was still overweight, actually, from what I heard, one sixty-eight point three. Yeah, you know what I mean. But uh, he 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 got to where it was agreeable with G, and uh, well, he, G called him out with with I don't give a fuck weight class. He's like, I'm gonna kick your ass. And G yeah. was on the path of kicking Bryce's ass, dude. Uh, now, and I, I'll be honest with you, man. I'm I'm a fan of the cut, man, and I kind of it kind of um. I didn't like that decision, but I'm gonna be honest, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, like you, I'm biased, man, because I was going for cut, man, and I kind of felt like someone that is not really part of our sport shouldn't be getting love like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, he's on ESPN in the morning. I, I think it was on. dangerous, dude. Um, for not not necessarily the sport, but like for um fighters now, because if we're gonna have influencers like Jake Paul and now Bryce Hall invading fucking sports, I mean, we've seen what Jake did, but we don't know how serious Bryce is. You know what I mean? If it's a joke to him, then that's a dangerous move. I mean, he switched up his, you know, he, he redid his whole line after he got beat up by Austin McBroom. Now he says, I am a fighter and I've always been a fighter. When at first it was, I'm not a fighter. I never claimed to be a fighter. Who, you know Bryce? Well, yeah, you don't know that You don't know that clip? Uh-uh. Because at first he said, I'm going to I'm gonna beat Austin's ass because I am a fighter. And then he gets beat up by Austin. He's like, I'm not a fighter. I never claimed to be a fighter. <laughs> and now, and now he, he beat G by TKO, so he, he added his last fucking walk-off. Well, let's give, let's give Bryce his flowers, though, because hey, I, he got it. I, did, I did get excited for Juggernaut's excitement because, you know, Juggernaut was in his corner. He's putting his name on the line for Bryce. And Bryce somehow pulls it out off a weird-ass fucking injury that fucking should have been disqualified but uh shout out to fucking juggernauts training me because bryce hall looked pretty decent actually you know and he was on his back foot a lot but he was also doing his head movement wasn't bad his foot movement wasn't bad either i mean for being for who he is it wasn't bad Jug told yeah. him, better not quit i'll lose my boxing license <laughs> i don't shut up. I fucking love lorenzo that. dude Kaylee Paint for that video. That shit was funny. I love that shit. Yeah, shout out to her photography and uh, what's the media company again? Um, fucking RSV. You know? Do you know uh, her company name? She works closely with Jackson Wink and uh, uh, Kaylee. Kaylee Paint official. I don't yeah. know. I don't remember the media. Company. I can't remember the media company right now. But shout out to her, man. She does great work. Yeah, she's man. Oh, she's, a from lot of, uh, I think she's from Albuquerque. No, she just goes down there. Ah. When the money's right, she'll go anywhere, she said. That makes sense. <laughs> I feel it. Does. Uh, what about the main event? The uh, main yeah, event. Listen, we I mean, I knew I've I pers I've personally trained with John Johnson. He's helped me out for certain for for a few camps, right? He's a beast, dude. <laughs> Bro, listen, I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't when I when, the times that we've trained, I couldn't keep I, my my head my head wasn't coming back. I mean, wasn't going forward. It was staying back. Yeah. That's how fast that little that that little, you know what I'm saying? He is. Um and we just knew, man. It was his time. We knew I, I don't care what anybody says. I really don't see anybody beating him in uh, BKFC. At, I'm not at that even way, lie, anyway. dog. It was uh, unanimous no, no, no. over here for for Ridge. You know, Ridge had some steam behind him. Ridge is a powerful. Ridge hitter. had the confidence going in, man. You know yeah. what I mean? It was. We we crazy. put uh, we love John too, dude. We had nothing but respect for John Dotson. But in this in this incident, we all went Ridge. We were fucking. You know, we thought Ridge was uh, the Christian younger did. fighter. Christian did. It. Oh, Christian went Dotson. That's right. That is true. Nah, <laughs> listen, John. John is John is, a, is 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 for this bare knuckle shit. John is a different animal. Just because of his speed. And the thing about his speed is that he can switch up speeds and switch up. He just keeps coming too, man. Exactly. Exactly. And the thing is about that is a whole lot. And like, like one of the things that I feel like it can aggravate a fighter is that he's smiling in your face. And that's not, and he's not, he's not really smiling. That's just who he is. You know what I'm saying? You know, so, I said that to Ridge. I said, I said, how are you going to react when John Dodson? Cause it's going to happen when he punches you in the fucking face and all you see is him smile. <laughs> 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 he said he's gonna Yo, try to kid, that smile off his face, but that kid, that kid, that kid makes somebody upset. You know what I'm saying? Not only that, but it can cause somebody to make mistakes. You know what yeah. I mean? John is that fast, bro. And I'm not saying that because he's a good friend of mine or he's a teammate. I'm just I'm giving props to where his props to you. and your boy Bryce. Then he is good. He was strong. I was like, wow. You know, I was like, okay. Yeah. But we just knew, man. We just, John is too much for anybody, bro. 48. 48. Yes, sir, please. Um, Not too much for everybody. Apparently, man, I, I honestly, I don't know why. I, you know, I mean, I, I don't, well, I won't say I doubted him, but I will say that I did vote against him because 
I said either it's going to go all five or it's going to be ended fairly quickly, dude, um, because of John's. What part you want to look at? I just wanted to see the card here because there's a few fights that I, I forgot. To oh, and about. I just wonder why the cut man uh, didn't. They didn't. That Bryce Hall cut man fight didn't go to Comey. That was weird to me. They switched it to featured, which was yeah. Do you know any details on that? Why, uh, 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 uh fucking why hey, Bryce got moved down to fucking feature on. fight? With to be honest, with, oh man, a lot of things was happening, bro, that I didn't agree with, bro, and a, and a bunch of us didn't agree with, man. But that's that's that happened and that went down and stuff like that. And um, you know, man, it just that that throws <laughs> off things a little bit. It sure does. It sure does. It sure does. It sure does. Um. And I don't think it's cool. Um, like I said, um, when I've said this one thing before, and I'll say it again. Um, I honestly feel like it, it could be, uh, it's a slap in the face to, uh, to actual real fighters because you got some of these guys and some of us that's been doing this for a lot of time. And just because somebody has a big following doesn't mean it shouldn't, it should, shouldn't over, it shouldn't, um, how can I say this? It shouldn't take precedent over someone that's been doing it pretty much their whole life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So you think that's why they got pushed back to featured? Could um I, I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't I, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was like, oh, that was Comain. And then they're like, uh Perez is walking out. The other Perez. I was like, what the fuck is going on? I was like, so now did you say the Comain? same thing that I said that uh that that we thought that was uh cowboy when we were there next with John and it wasn't? And it wasn't, it was this guy. Yeah, it was, it was uh, uh fucking uh McElroy. McElroy. Mick Elroy or I don't know McElroy. Anyways, big, yeah, he's huge. I thought that was Donald for sure, dude. I mean, I didn't get a lot of time with John because I was so starstruck. To be honest with you, I know I, yeah. I don't get starstruck, dude. But when I, I met John, I was like, to bring have Christian bring the camera. He's like, what? I was like, motherfucker, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Come with me or stay where you're at. Yeah, you I'm know it's man. We're laid back, man. We fucking are cool with everybody. But dude, once we met John, it was like the words were stolen out of my mouth. I didn't know what to fucking say, dude. I was like, uh, go. <laughs> I just started bad out of my. Nah, and 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 I bet you you didn't expect him to be as nice as he was when you guys, you know, finally so humble, dude. Was so <laughs> fucking cool, man. I didn't think his stature was that big. I keep saying that. I've I say that probably once a month on the show. Yeah, my brother is six like, four. Dude, like, he's he's fuck? he's a he's I'm a peanut compared to my brother, dude. But when my brother like st like stood next to John, dude, and John just fucking he's just a massive dude, dude. Like yeah, I took his hand and uh, now that he's a heavyweight too, it doesn't it doesn't it, it doesn't help. <laughs> this was a week before his fight. You got to remember because when we no, were in Albuquerque, he, not. Uh, was it, oh yeah, week it was a week. It was night. a week before his fight when we were in Albuquerque, and so he was at the show. So he was huge, dude. And when I shook his hand, it was like a child's hand. <laughs> dude, I was like, no wonder you beat people. And I got a decent sized hand, dude. I yeah, was like, imagine that fucker. I was like, no wonder you thing. fuck people up, bro. I was like, your hand is a fucking oh, giant's hand, uh, man. So we got hip, hip hop, hip hop anonymous, fiftieth year, year for for, hi for hip, hip hop. hop. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, are you a big hip hop guy? Of course. You didn't see I came up to Public Enemy. Hell yeah, yeah he did. So uh, with, yo, with, with, that walkout was legendary, bro. I'm gonna send it to you guys. That shit was uh, yo, it was off the hook. You got behind the scenes shit? Yeah, I get it. Um fucking with 50 anniversary, 50 years of hip hop, man. What is your number one hip hop song and who do you fuck with Damn, the most? Number one song in hip hop. Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. I can't I can't give you a number one song, but I can give you a couple groups that I that I still, you know, like to listen to and 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 and, and rock to still to this day. Public Enemies number one. I like I like I love Cool J. Oh yeah. Damn, ladies, the ladies love hey, man. Uh, Juggernaut was just up. Um, uh, Juggernaut just gave LL his belt. His uh police academy fucking a gazette belt or uh, a police gazette belt. He yeah. gave that to him. He said that was uh LL's uh LL's grandpa, I think, or maybe dad or someone along that was uh the champion at one point and got his belt taken for him from some bullshit shit. And oh. juggernauts are like, I'm giving this belt back how... to your fucking family. I don't know how I missed that. Nah, dude, it was dope, bro. Um, he took a picture of LL and then there was a video showing um uh juggernaut gave his belt away and said this this belt belongs to your family and i wanted to earn it back and give it back to your family so that was cool him yeah. yeah man yeah i like all the a lot of the old school uh a lot of the old school you know groups that are that are that are that are not even around anymore i still like like naughty by nature and all them naughty by nature thousand hey. facts lord uh lord of the undergrounds hell uh, yeah dog I'll go in, baby. <laughs> Renee, the Lost Boys, you know what I'm saying? Um, 
Who do you what got, Levi? Like, our group, 50 years. Group? No, nah, just hip-hop, man. Like Just oh. hip-hop in general, man. You got all those classics, all those free, you know, just a bunch of uh, 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 freestyle, all that stuff, man. All that stuff. I listen to, I listen to it still to this day. You know, but Public um, Enemy is one of my all-time favorite groups, so, um, and it will always be. Fair that's enough. what's up. Favorite group? Hip-hop? You don't got to do group. Just in general, dog. You know, it's well, that's, 50 that's years what of hip-hop. That's what I'm going with right now. That's what I'm going right, with fair. right now. Favorite group, hip-hop, G-Unit. I, on God. Right. Yeah, G-Unit, on God. There's no question it's G-Unit. Yeah, but uh, for me, uh, my favorite hip-hop song? artist of all time is... It, it's a real close fucking one, two. It's either Nip. Fuck, I got three, dude. It's Nip, Pac, or Nas. I'm a huge Nas guy. And if I think of hip hop, not not so much gangster rap or rap, I think of the king of fucking hip hop. And that to me is Nas. Nas, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, no, I mean, look at him. He's just so consistent, dude. His last three, four albums are so fucking good, dude. I like, oh, I yeah. personally, dude, I'm a huge retro Nas, early 90s, uh, late 90s Nas. But, uh, uh, dude, his last four albums might be my favorite albums he's ever put out, dude. And that just says, like, that's like 30 years of hip hop for him. And he's exactly. fucking amazing, dude. It's a, yeah, like man. Magic was a masterpiece, King's Disease 3 and 2 fucking masterpieces. Awesome. Um, my favorite hip hop album of all time is Illmatic. Is it really? Yep. Uh, Fuck, I that's, that's, a, that's high up there. That's high and up there. And after that, get rich or die trying. Really? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's See, another classic as well. That's another classic. My old lady asked me which one, because uh, 50 Cent's coming up here in Seattle. And um, she was asking me, she's like, well, who's your, uh, what's your favorite 50 Cent album? Is it Get Rich? I was like, nah. My favorite is either going to be. Um, uh uh guess who's back which uh is before he got shot and he was signed to columbia records you don't never see it on spotify or anything it's uh -uh. like a it's a slept on a uh, album and uh he has a couple songs on with nas in that in that album and fucking um i love i love guess who's back and then i also love the album by 50 uh rare rare's good rare's really good dude you just you, you don't hear them because they're they were they were produced by not shady or aftermath or g unit they were i think both columbia yeah, and he don't fuck with them because he gets no money out of it. Uh, they exactly. dropped him. He's not like fuck him. I ain't gonna fucking promote those records, even though they're fucking amazing, dude. Old yeah, school man. 50 Cent is so dope, bro. I mean, when he was doing all his mixtapes before, like he got big, and he had all that fucking uh, inspiration and ambition to go fucking be the best of New York. He was dope as fuck, dude. Yeah, he was. Um, it was when he started getting commercial with, and and that, and, and I mean, and all rappers do that. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But uh, I mean, but he's still in my he's still he's still one of the best in my opinion. Oh, oh god, dude. people don't understand how good of a lyricist Fifty Cent is because everyone thinks he's uh you know it's like guy got shot speaks low in the club. Nah, Fifty Cent is a motherfucking he's got lyricist, lyrics, dude. Son. Yeah, no, he's like, an animal. I, I love saying the lyric them that he has on Obi Trice, and it goes, "You can do all them push-ups to pump up your chest, but I got a twelve gauge Mossberg to pump up pump your up chest. Your chest. <laughs> for a after that shell hit your best. Fear me like you fear God, cause, cause I bring, bring death." death. Oh. <laughs> Ah. This shit's too cold, bro. This shit's too shit. cold. Um, Mac Miller, I'll always in my yeah. job. I thought I thought he was gonna pick his Mac. Uh, I did it say my I favorite artist. That kid, I, that, that kid died different. too. He he died too soon, man. Right, mm -hmm. and see, they always think he's all about um party and rap, but he can spit too. Oh, he got no, balls. Man. Like I said, That's I listen great. to some of the songs uh, still to this day. I haven't in a while, but that that kid that that kid he left too soon, man. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, you have to think. Like, he made his debut album. He's not even out of high school yet. And that shit's and Fire, still dude. classic. Fire, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, man. I always get impressed with younger artists. You know, the, like, the night, like, let's think about Mob Deep. You know, when uh, Prodigy and Havoc were, like, 19, beefing with fucking Tupac and shit, dude. The lyrics in some of their, their, their songs are so intelligent, dude. You're like, you're 19 years old when you made that? What the fuck? Exactly, right? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that's like, like a 50 huh? year old man's knowledge, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, that's crazy. I've been digging in on Big L again, all over starting that. I love Big over. L, dude. Love it. Like you can't go wrong, with Big L. He just don't have the catalog for me, man. And that we've talked nah, about. Nah, that, that's, that's, that's the part that sucks because the dude is really, 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 really good. good. We, he did. He did get our vote for the best lyricist of all time. Yeah, we, yeah, he did. Even though he in didn't have a short catalog. Yeah. Still got some foot. His room. bars were unfuckable, dude. No, well, bars... because you got a lot of these uh, these industry rappers that knew who he was, and they and they're the ones that are talking about them, and that's. 
That's the type right. of crowd that you want talking about your music anyway is, is the people. You know what I'm saying? And then Sean Carter killed him and stole his fucking rap. <laughs> I was just so. going to say, our boy Christian, man, he's so big on Big L's death. He's all like, he had catalog. Jay-Z stole it all. <laughs> <laughs> if, you look, if you look at it and you the go back. The story does make sense. Chris, I was gonna say, Christian's got it. He's got it. He's got it pretty much pinned and figured out. So back to fighting, man. Um, you did MMA for a while, man. Your your record is all close to even. I think it was nine and seven. Am I wrong? Uh, seven and nine. Sounded like that, yeah. Um. Oh shit, I have the. Uh, fucking yo, you did have it up. Yeah, I fucked everything up. Just keep going. Who was your toughest fight in MMA, and uh, what promotions were you working under? Do you do you recall? Um, I would say my toughest fight in MMA. Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, it was um, it was my first amateur know. fight, bro. Who? My first amateur fight. I even forgot his name. Oh, okay. Um, but yo, this motherfucker, bro. Oh my god. I've had some tough ones though. Don't get me wrong. Like for instance, like um, the one with uh, with Kevin Holland was pretty tough. Um, when I fought, I fought him on a contender. That was pretty tough. That was a tough one. Um, I was just looking at that actually. Yeah, yeah, you were on the Contender Series. Uh, I wonder if you wanted to uh, talk about that at all. Season 2, Episode 1, if you want to go back and watch it. Um, um, what you call it? Um, that that fight, man, uh, I would like to fight Kevin Holland again. And I think this time I think I'll beat him. Um, Look, he's good, though, man. I'm no, he is. Fan, no, listen, like I said, like I, I think I said this before. That fight that I had with him turned me into a fucking dog, bro. Real shit. Um, okay, yeah, I, great, nothing, great. I give nothing but respect to that guy and, and to that brother. Um, nothing but, nothing but um, he's doing, he's making big noise right now in the UFC. Um, I would say that was one of my, that could, that was one of my toughest. Um, Can you clarify why it made you a dog? Well, it was just because of him talking shit. <laughs> him talking shit and not wanting and not wanting to, to to experience that shit again. You know what I'm saying? With yeah. anybody else. I was like, all right, bet. So this is what it is. So this is what we're gonna do. And um and it's just it's just been like that. It's been like that ever since. Um You're a second fighter that's been on the contender series, actually. Um we had a, a gal named Marnik Man. Uh she's from Montana too, and uh she went on there. She took a vicious fucking head kick and it ended, I think, in the second. Like two weeks after Kamar Usman. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Same thing. How right. how is it like right being on the show bang, though? Bang left head. Kick. Honestly, like um, yo, I'm just like I said, man. I'm 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 a I'm a I'm a street kid, man. Straight out of fucking Massachusetts and um, coming to these big stages and and you know with cameras and stuff like that, um. The the show was great, man. Um, but it was just, you know, it was it was a new experience for me. Um, you had, you know, to have Dana White there, all the Hunter and all these other guys, Sean Shelby, and not only that, but just a, a selective group of people. Yeah. Um it, it was it again, it was it was nerve-wracking, bro. It was something first time experience. Um, and uh um it was just I enjoyed the experience, it was just a new experience for me. Um, and I just felt like, uh, what you call it, um, no excuses or nothing like that. It was just something new for me and, and, and having to, you know, uh, 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 handle those conditions when it's new, man, it's something, it's, it's a little different than when it is when you're doing something every day. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, I, you know, um, especially with all the production and all, you gotta yeah. go here, you gotta go there, you gotta do this, that, and this. I, I'm sure it fucks with your game plan when you're trying to fight too, when you're being told what to do constantly. Yeah, 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 man. Um, I mean, you know, fast forward, I'm, I'm, you know, happy that I got those experiences again because if they were to ever happen again, I, I've already been there. And this is yeah. thing that there's this thing that we do we call which is called mental practice where we where, where we where we mental where we mentally prepare ourselves to get and be in the fight months or weeks before the fight even happens. Um, I came from, I became familiar with that practice way after that fight. So um, you know, now uh going forward with any with any fight, um, especially with the fight that I just experienced with with, with the eye thing, uh safe to say that um uh, uh preparation for fights going forward would be would will be um uh always preparing for backup plans and stuff like that. Cause prior to these fights, I, I wasn't really, you know, I didn't expect to uh for any of these things to happen like that. So that way it kind of shocked me a little bit. But um, I hope it, you know, actually going forward, um, we shouldn't, those mistakes shouldn't be made. It should be on point going forward. Okay. Yeah. So 
<laughs> Can you tell us the story about uh, when you hopped in the van at Knucklemania and uh, it was you and Noah Cutter way in the back? <laughs> I didn't know that was y'all fighting. I, I thought you guys were teammates. Yeah, yeah, that was fucking and I look back man. there and then she gets on the car and I look. I was like, are you guys fighting each other? It's like, yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I Yo, it's just a trip, right? Because I, I don't, like I said, I got a, a a friend of mine. She became a friend of mine now. She's a very, very, very supportive of Noah Cutter. And um, now we actually I actually argue over that. But, yo, Noah Cutter's a, he, he's a good dude, bro. He's a good dude. Um, He's a big motherfucker, but he's a good yeah. dude, though. Um, I didn't expect for him. I, it's crazy because I didn't see him. Um, I didn't, I, I mean, I seen him all week long and he didn't look that big. He didn't. Right. But come, come the day of the weigh-ins and come the day of the fight, fight day. I was like, yo, who the fuck is this? Bro? <laughs> yo, dude, like, huge, huge. Legs, and to be honest with you, I thought that, uh, Jeremy Holloway was bigger than him. Turns out he's bigger than both of us. <laughs> Uh, you're 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 a shorter fighter. What do you uh What do you do to always combat you know reach and shit? Because you are a you're a hell of a good striker. I mean, you think your striking numbers would be down, but they're not. They're precise. Nah, um, uh, <laughs> I've always fought the bigger guy in my whole career, and even on the street. Um, yeah. so we so like I said, like I had, uh, expressed to you guys a little while ago, footwork has always been my one of my main things. So especially especially with these long and with these longer and bigger guys. Footwork is key to having to get in and come out, uh, get in and come out with angles and whatnot. So that way we can always uh, bring them to our game, pretty much bring them to our height. And once we do that, they pretty much we took away their their strength. So it, they pretty much fight in our game at that point. Hell yeah! Do you think it's going to become more beneficial now that bare knuckles getting more popular? That people are going to start putting round rings inside gyms and shit, so that you guys can start training for that fucking ring. I mean, I, I it, it's only right. Hey, with the real, I think those turnbuckles, you know, and the way how how that, that ring is so different. You got stiff ropes; they have no give. You know, it's like bouncing into a fucking wall when you guys bounce into it. Right? Speaking of the rope, I seen after sure after the uh, the takedown or the 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 tackle the, the tackle Bryce Hall. I did see like G was in the corner for a second, and he did swing and like hit his funny bone also. So not on, on top of landing on it weird, he was punching. He was going for an uppercut, and I watched it just cracking oh, the fucking shit. rope so all of that didn't help at all <laughs> i mean even even like i said bare knuckle mma all these sports are just um advancing at a fast pace that it's only right and 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 it's only a matter of time before i feel like a lot of gyms start adapting that and um and yeah it's becoming so popular now it's you know i think bare knuckle is becoming a household name faster than any other thing that i've ever seen in my life you know what i mean oh, like fuck yeah. Hell, yeah it's a fight yeah, people love it, man. And uh, like, I, I just I find it really disadvantaging for you guys that are training for this because there's no way you can train for that atmosphere without a fucking ring that's designed like it, you know, because I watch I watch all you guys that are coming in. You guys are training in squares, you know, in the rings, obviously, like boxing rings or you come from a cage and cage or boxing ring are completely different rings um like i said there's no give on those ropes those turnbuckles stick out a bit so yeah, i've, I've seen people get stuck ropes. in those turnbuckles and they just get pounded on dude because there's nowhere to go yeah and, uh, yeah i watched you bounce off it there like when you were finishing. yeah I like That's to think of like, hey, get out of there, get out of well, there. I, I think of people <laughs> like uh, ryan duran and gogo -Go. speaking of that uh, speaking of those guys they're on both the next card but those two fighters will rush you and and place you and pin you against a turnbuckle and fuck you up. I've watched it happen. You know, Brian Duran's good for it. He he likes to rush you, get you into the ropes, and then throw bombs on you so you can't escape. And he'll like to pin you against one of those turnbuckles. Um, I think that's I think that's just gonna come to a change once the ring starts getting into people's gyms. You know what I mean? Obviously, I don't think Baron Uncle would unless they start selling rings, they're not gonna let you take it their design, but you can you can make one like it, dude. And yeah. Once that starts happening, I think people will start to learn that ring a lot more, and we won't see that shit as much. No, nah, well, I, I, like I just finished saying, I mean, I, I stress footwork, uh, and I, I honestly believe no matter, no, I, I get your point. No matter what ring, and no matter what uh, uh, cage or whatever is, if your footwork is on point, I think you'll be fine in terms of you know measuring out uh, 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 angles and cutting people off to the point where it's it's in your benefit. That's where the boxing uh, background comes into advantage big time. Exactly. Um, exactly. 
I think a lot of the MMA guys are learning that this isn't a cage and they're starting to understand that this is a way different environment in there. Exactly. And they're starting to work Mouth on sport. It. Yeah, the wrestlers and the and the boxers are excelling in this fucking sport. Uh, that's what those are two like two dominant and, and Muay Thai is coming in pretty tough now lately. Things that work to clinch well. Yeah. The, yeah. Anyone that works clinch well seems to have that really high success. Takes the fucking fight to a whole new level, man. So we we briefly touched on those two fighters, uh, Gogo and Brian Durant. They got they got some big fights coming up in forty nine. So let's talk about BKFC forty nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, starting off with uh, Dakota High Pine versus um, uh, Brian Duran. Uh, who do you have? Uh, Dakota High Pine is coming off uh, a loss, but he also had a really strong victory in Great Falls here against Coda Greenwood. Where he banged up Coda good, and then you got Brian Duran, who's on a terrorizing winning streak, and um, they both one's one's a really really technical striker, and one's a bomber. Who, who do you got in this fight? I go with the technical. I go with Duran. What's his name? Duran. Uh, Duran is the bomber. He's the, he's the one that likes to throw the haymakers and the hooks, and but he likes to you know what I mean. He rushes you. He's a he's so a, yeah good. he's a he's a man that gets busy like Dotson. He goes right out. as soon as that bell dings off, he's off. Yeah, guys like that are scary, man. He is, man. Um, I, I, I have to go for well, Dakota's my cousin, actually. So I'm gonna oh, go for Dakota. Oh Jesus. Um, um, but but that's uh, it's a biased call. Um, I think that either that this fight could go either way. To be real, I with think you. Dakota last passed a second round. Whether well, when you got when you got when you got explosive guys like that, I, I honestly feel like it can go it could go either way. And they can't, and that's what I'm thinking. Like, uh, I know Brian will apply that that solid pressure for one and two rounds, but after that, he's starting to get gassed. You know what I mean? Yeah, because he's giving it his all in every fucking punch. He's giving, you know what I mean? And then Brian's hungry too. He wants a fucking belt. He's been saying it for two fights. Yeah, yeah. I want a belt. I want a belt. But I he want just came to the 145 division. So yeah, he did move. He did move divisions, and now that's, he has to climb ranks again. Stacked, that's, and that's a that's a stacked division, I believe. That 45. Division. 145 stacked up in the last few months. It exactly. Got deep. Yeah, it got deep for sure. Um, okay, and then next we've got. Um, by the way, this is a slaughterhouse card. Shout out to Shane and shout out Ryan Perez and shout out Bobby. Daniel Alvarez versus Jared Kid Gotti Grant. Ooh. That's gonna be a tough fight. Yeah. Ooh. Grant is five and two, uh ex champion, and Daniel Alvarez has had some bangers since he's been in there. So. Yeah. I'm gonna go with the ex champion. All right. I got Grant too, bro. I got Grant. Uh, I'm gonna go with the ex champion. From what we've seen on uh Fight World, he's ready to come back and show the world he's ready to get it done. So I'm going Grant as well. That was a damn good episode. If you guys haven't watched it out there, go ahead and go watch it. Yeah, shout out Kigati, man. This is a banger, and this All is right. going to be a headliner here. We got Bryce Henry versus Tom Showoff. Ooh. Ooh, I'm going go with Tom. You're going to go Tom. Uh, <laughs> Holy shit, that's going to be... Dude, they're both, they're both undefeated. Bryce beat our our uh, hometown fucking hero fucking you know uh, Billy Wagner is uh is my son's coaching uh is his coach boxing coach yeah but he's also our like home like Montana's hero dude he's fought Ali's grandson he's been down there on Canelo's cards he's he's just a big boxer here you know and yeah. he was uh undefeated also going against Henry and Henry's young and we didn't really know much about Bryce Bryce beat the brakes off our boy dude yeah, smiling while doing it. Yeah, he beat he beat up uh, our boy Billy good. So I'm gonna go Bryce and I'm, nothing against Tom because I'm a fan of Tom's style. But I think Henry's just Tom said this is his last go. At least that's the rumor mill. So we'll see. No. Yeah, you might lay. I know. Down. Why would you quit at this kind of level, man? Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> I know. I'm going with the smiling assassin, Bryce Henry, though. Our buddy Ryan Edspin wants a fight before he retires. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and then we got the main event. And then we got uh, my favorite BKFC fighter, um, which is a hard hard for me to say because I, I love like a lot of people on the same level. But my favorite person that I get excited for in his fights is Gogo. We got Sabowski versus Jake Lindsay, the Gypsy. Well, I'm I, this is I I have to go with 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 uh, with Jake because we, we share the same. Uh, EP, same yes, we go ahead. What was that? Sorry. I have to go with Jake because we go, we have the same management. So I got I, I got to ride with my man. Who are you going with, Gypsy? Okay. Who's your management? We have the same management. Uh, who's your, who, who under who? Uh, Jackson Wink. 
That's what I thought. Okay, I'll just make yeah, sure. Yeah, Jackson Wick Worldwide. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, we're sure. on the same management. I, 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 I gotta, I gotta support my guy. I gotta support our guys. If I, if I see it, something else, I'll hear about that shit when I get to the team. Is that new? Is that new though? It, like, did he just join Jackson Wing? Um, well, he's been with us for a couple of months. He's been with us for a while, for for a few. He's been uh, he I, I he was with us for the uh for the last two fights, I believe. Okay. Oh, shit. okay. Okay. I guess I didn't pick that up that that switch of management. Yeah, he was. Yeah, um, he, yeah he's. With, um, he was with us when he fought. Um, well, that's another thing. And I caught heat for it. Um, but that's my nigga. I don't give a fuck. Uh, that's my guy. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't say that. Nah, you can say what the fuck you want, dog. You can say the fuck you want. Now, now um, us, we can't say that. But you can't. <laughs> he was with us when uh, when he fought Lou. When he fought Lou Palomino. Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. But but, uh, but I, obviously, you know, I was going for my man. Okay. Uh, Lindsay was on our show, and I think we had some of our hand in this in this pot actually, because um, Jake just mentioned Gogo on our show, and we're like, "Well, you want to talk to him?" <laughs> so we called Gogo, and Gogo jumped. But they on said the it was by contract that they were fighting next. So they, well, it wasn't certified yet. That was the rumor mill, and uh, then then Gogo came on and said, "I'll fucking fight you." And then before we knew it, I think it was like two days later that it was official. So yeah, yeah they were both on the podcast. If you never watched it, that's a good one. Uh, they. Gogo said he's gonna break like, him. Says, oh, yeah. I, well, like, oh, I will. listen, that uh, uh, the Lindsay, uh, um, he's good. He's so good, bro. He's, he's so good. good. Like good. Like the Gogo -Go guy. I don't, I don't. I don't really know him or know of him a lot. Don't get me wrong. He, he's he, he looks like he's an animal. You know what I'm saying? Well, you yeah. gotta go but back and watch but, him. Macedonia warrior, man. He's a no, years, no. Man. He looks like he's a fucking like he's a killer. But you I mean, uh, Lindsay. Uh, I don't know, man. He the, the kid is uh the kid is good, and I don't think um, Lindsey's really good, man. Uh, his last opponent. Uh, 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 um, I'm I'm having a fucking brain fart. Um, England, uh, Wales. God, uh, Lily, wasn't it? James Lily. Fuck, I was having yeah. James Lily. That fucking fight was good, bro. It was insane. Was cool technical fighters, man. They were they were just banging, yeah. dude. Oh, we could have just clicked that. Connor Tierney. Oh, Connor Tierney. Yeah, that's right. Fuck. Like, um, uh, uh, Connor got worked by Jake, dude. Yeah, that's great. Jake, uh, uh, Jake Lindsay is that dude, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, that. Yeah, man. Like I said, um, um, I learned a lot from him when he, when when uh uh his last couple fights, especially when he fought Lou, and um. The guy's a banger, bro, and I think um, I wouldn't necessarily say people to you know put him past him, but I, I think he's gonna pull it off. Well, you, you got he got Lindsay, and you you got who? Fuck, that's a tough one. I'm gonna go 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 just because you got go go because he hang we well, hung out with him here in town. So you, you know, uh, you know, other than my bias that he's just my favorite dude to watch. Uh, I got him because of fucking slaughter, but, like uh, because of Shane too. You know, he's we work closely with the, like. With Shane, uh, Guerrilla Warfare Apparel, uh, he also is owner, a part owner of um, Slaughterhouse as well, management. So okay. my thing is, is it comes down to if Gogo -Go tightened up that accuracy because he was just throwing his last fight. I think he, I think he was putting in a way that he didn't really. Yeah, Gogo's -Go well, learning. Gogo's -Go's evolving. Some, some fights don't go Jake's as got that accuracy. You know, some some fights don't go as planned. You know, sometimes you got to do a little. You know, maybe throw a little crazy punch here and there or do something just to throw people off. But um, for the most part, bro, I, I think he's going to pull it off. Now, it, that that fight's going to be worth watching. So for those that are interested, watching uh, BKFC 49 is going down, I think, next week, right? Yeah. Yeah. The 29th, I yep. think. Uh, you said you had Aljo, right? You said you were going Aljo? I'm Aljo. I'm going for Aljo, yes, and the reason why is because O'Malley's not a grappler, and you know Aljo's gonna go for the gra gonna go for the wrestling. Hold on, though. Uh, fucking um, O'Malley just entered a a a, a fucking jujitsu tourney. Yeah, and he, man, and he just won it. He just fucking topped it too. Oh Jesus, bro. Sterling's wrestling. I mean, uh, his wrestling is second to none. Look what he was able to do to Cejudo, bro. That's. That's fucking that's, true. That was Levi's point. Levi's all like, "Look, look what Aljamain did to Henry, dude." And I, you know, and uh, and I, and I was, and I was, and I was going for Cejudo in that fight. I was too. I was going I was for Cejudo when I saw that. I was like, I, "I'll never go against him." 
And Henry got beat up, dude. It wasn't, dude, it wasn't close. I don't think so. Nah. I, I'm um, with you. I agree with you. Yeah. So uh, I, I think O'Malley is, uh, yeah, I mean, when they when they did their face off yesterday, I was watching the presser. Dude, Sean's way bigger than fucking Aljo. Like, way oh, bigger. Makes uh, me small if, compared to him. Yeah, if he fucking gets him, I, I don't know that uh, Aljo is going to – because Sean hits like a fucking Matt truck, dude. He may be um, that guy that weighs, you know, 145 fucking pounds and 135 fucking pounds or 155 pounds that range. But he hits like a 200-pound fucking man, dude. He's a fucking yeah. beast, dude. No, he does. It, 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 he does hit hard, but – I don't think he got anything for Aljo, man. Aljo's, I think, right now on a different level right now. He's even talking about going up after this fight. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if he loses a belt. He goes up. You know what I mean? Um, uh, they they brought it up. He didn't really give any details, and I don't think Dana would have allowed him to say anything yet. But that seems to be the plan in action. We yeah. are uh, we're coming to the end of our hour here. Um, I just wanted to give you time to be able to shine some light on the, your people and uh, your sponsors. And if you have any charities, foundations that you want to shout out or anything like that, now would be a good time to do so, my man. First, of all, I would like to thank you guys for having me come on anytime, yeah. anywhere. Bob's. I uh, just want to send a quick shout out to all my teammates, Jackson Wink, um, all my coaches. Um, Family, friends, Brown Bomb Nation, thanks for the love and support. Yeah, I've been, you know, rooting, uh, getting it back of me and rooting. And now that we're doing this, uh, this bare knuckle thing, I'm pretty sure we'll be, you know, we'll be at the top of the gate when in no time. Um, you know, this fight that we just had was a draw, but it ain't nothing. You know, we just, we get back in the gym and we go forward. But just really, man, I just want to thank uh, Bare Knuckle itself for having us on, for coming out here to New Mexico, you guys, meeting you guys, getting along with you guys, yeah. and just being able to, you know, uh, being able to build. And um, looking forward to the next time we do hang out and have a good time. And I just want to say uh, just thank you to everybody, especially to the people, to the people of New Mexico that, has uh, taken me in, uh, brought me in, and 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 has just been showing me nothing. I don't know, man. They did the same for us too, man. Your community is a cool community. Yeah, man. From 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 toddlers to seniors, everybody loves fighting out here in New Mexico and Albuquerque. And I'm pretty sure um, we've already displayed that in both shows that you, well, all three shows that you guys been out here for the uh, the first one, which was in the Advance Center, and the last two, which was in the Boston. Yes, um. It's it's been great. I couldn't ask for a better experience, and that's all, man. I just want to say, like I said, man, thanks to uh, my schools, you know, JW, Canal Street Boxing, and, and um, Defensive Edge. Back yes, sir, over man. Yes, sir. Massachusetts. Shout out to all of them, and shout out to Albuquerque, and shout out to BKFC and David Feldman. Um, it will. Uh, I feel like it's a pleasure getting to know you. Um, it was awesome to get to hang out with you down in Albuquerque. Uh, brought me lots of smiles, a lot of good memories during that night. Um, Levi, you want to run us down our fucking sponsors, baby? You get one. Okay. Uh, Ooh. first and foremost, I'd like to thank uh Guerrilla Warfare Apparel, um, the best fight gear in the fight world. Uh, if you want to do any shopping at Guerrilla Warfare, make sure you use our promo code TWB10. It will save you 10% off at checkout. If you're going to do some shopping for us, make sure you check out Guerrilla Warfare's extra, um, all their gear as well. You don't only got to go there to shop for us. They have awesome fucking fight but gear. But you can. You got to make sure you get yourself a Project Pro shirt or everybody knows a Christian. And we're doing a limited uh, limited edition drop. That's the next four months, we're going to have four limited edition drops. One of them being in honor of one of our favorite 90s movies, Wayne's World. Uh, we are the Wayne's World of Montana, Wayne's World of BKFC. We are the guys that, like, people... Whoa! Uh, whoa! <laughs> totally. Party time. Excellent. Doodle, doodle, doodle. Um, fucking, uh, we're going to be dropping uh, the bus world. And uh, that's uh, in that's a double answer there. That's going to be um, uh, 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 a diss towards somebody that thinks that it's their planet. Planet uh, whose planet is it? It's not his. It's the bus world. Fucking right. And uh, so, if you get it, you get it. If you know, you know. Um, shout out to Twenty Past Four, your one stop vaping head shop. We got five locations: one in Gray, uh, one or two in Gray Falls, one in Helena, one in Billings, and one in Prescott, Arizona. Shout out to Hudson's Trash Removal. Um, if you have any garbage or anything that you want to remove out of your out life, of here. make sure you hit up our boy Kyle Hudson and his company, Hudson's Trash Removal. He'd be glad to get rid of the garbage out of your life. Mama. 
Uh, shout out to uh, our auntie, Jamie St. Mark. She's always been down for us since day one. Uh, and also shout out to Beard Sconson, our boys that always hold us down. Make sure our beard and our mustaches are nice and greasy, nice and juicy, so we look amazing. And then also shout out to Halftime Sports Bar and Grill uh, and Casino, the best sports bar in Great Falls. And, and Taco Treat. And Taco Treat. Make sure that on fight night that you go in there and say the weekly bus fucking sent me. Fucking right. And with that, Will, thank you. David Potter, as always, you the man. Will, I, I want you on again, man. I feel like we ran out of fucking time, dude. I know, I right? Time flew time. by so fast. Bro, dude, I felt like we ran out of time. I, that that doesn't always happen on these shows, man. Sometimes we're like, ah, oh, man, the, the clock it's is... It's the vibe, B. It's the vibe. But yo, check this out. I'm being told we should be getting on another bare knuckle card soon, so... Um, I'm back in the, I'm back in camp next week. So you guys will hear about what's what's what are the plans coming up. You guys are here. I, I could just you guys are hear about it first. But um, um yeah. I'm told uh, we should be on another car before the end, before the end of the year. So let's see what's up. I would like to make you a regular. I'm I'm whatever whatever you guys need, bro. I'm here, bro. You can call me in for anything. Yeah, well, dude, uh, if you, if you got open availability on some of these times, I'd like just to have you chime in on 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 a re on a regular basis, man. Hey, brother, any, any, anything that you need me to do or anything, I got you, bro, anything. I, on God, same here, man, vice versa. Shout out to Jackson Wing, too, man. Nothing but love for you guys over there. Um, thanks for always uh, showing us support at the Weekly Bus. We'll continue to do so for Jackson Wing. Um, and thanks for helping us, uh, our boy, Kai Stewart, when he was down there at Jackson Wing. Yes, sir, um, yes, sir. So I, just, I definitely want to say shout out to those guys as well because they have showed us love since we've been down there. And um, that's all it is on meet up at 50 or something. We're trying to go to 50. Yeah, it'd be nice to see you down there. Uh, are you going to go to 50? Um, where you, uh, let's see. Um, right now I got, I got some things happening on with, 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 with my business and stuff like that. So let's see if I can make it out there. I sure will. That'd be cool, man. All right. With you that, thanks everybody for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Uh, make sure you guys check out Fight World Live and their episodes. And thank you, Fight World Live. Shout out to Amazon Prime. This is the weekly buzz. David Potter, have a good weekend. Thank you, Will. Hey, stay on here for a second, man. Yes, yes. sir. Yes, sir. Killed it.